Hey everyone, my name is Bob, I'm a streamer for OwnTV and in this part of our e-learning I'm going to show you a powerful broadcasting tool called OBS. So OBS is basically the tool most people use for streaming, there are more of them out there, there is XSplit as well which is used by a lot of people as well, but we're going to show OBS here since it's free and really easy to use. The next part of this OBS tutorial is the more technical part, which are our settings. So to find our settings, we click on the controls, on settings and another window opens. And there we already see that we have a few tabs, but we start with the general one. First of all, you can set different languages. So OBS gets developed by multiple people and they add stuff every day or not every day, but all the time. So there's a good chance if your language isn't here yet, it's going to be added in the future. But for this tutorial, we stick with English. We can have a different theme. We can have the default theme, which is more white. This is the dark theme. I thought it would be nice because there you go. You see what's the difference here. I do stick with the dark one here. You can automatically check OBS for updates. So every time you open OBS, it checks for updates and it tells you that there is a new update and then you can update it. I would recommend having this on. You can have a start dialog on startup. So this is not that important, but if you want to, like those are individual settings, feel free to play around with them because there is no wrong or right here. You can have a confirmation dialog when starting stream. So it says you're going to stream or you're going to start your stream. Is it okay? Yes. So you don't click start streaming on accident. Then same goes for stopping streams and you can have automatically record when streaming. This is an important one. I had this on on when I was doing speed runs because it would record your stream. But this takes up more resources than OBS already does. So I would not recommend having this on on because the recordings usually happen on Twitch anyways. You usually activate this on Twitch, so Twitch is recording your streams. Why did I have this on when I did speedruns? For example, you are on a really good run and you want to submit this run and then your connection cuts out, then you don't have the full recording. And that was the problem back then. I needed to have the full recordings even if my stream would die because otherwise I couldn't submit my speedruns here. Very specific use here, I know, but this is the only use I can think of having this on on. If you want to have them, all your streams recorded anyways, feel free to have this on on. Then you can keep recording when stream stops as well. And so on, like all these settings here. I do not have those on on. Then we can have snapping. So when you have this on enabled, when you move your sources, like in the last chapter we were talking about sources, they snap either on the edge of the screen or on other sources so you can better put them together like a puzzle or something if you want to be able to move your sources freely on the on the screen then you can have this one disabled and this one disabled i like the snapping function so i have this on enabled you can hide cursors over projectors make projectors always on top and save projectors on exit you can minimize the tree when started and so on. So as I said, those are not the most important settings. They are like individual preferences. You could argue about this one. They kind of feel important, but the other ones are personal preferences. Those are way more important because now we're talking about the stream settings. We can have a list of stream services right here. We can have a custom, custom streaming server. So if you are streaming to a private server, maybe capture it from there and so on. You have a custom streaming server. You can have a list of streaming services here. So those are the most important ones. But if I go and show all services and hit the button here, those are all that are available. We are streaming to Twitch. Then we have to choose a server. I would recommend having this on auto. As you see, you can choose a specific server and you usually want to choose the one that's the nearest to you. But if it doesn't make any problems, have it on auto. 
and this is your stream key. So we have shown this where we have shown where you get your stream key on an earlier tutorial. This is where you would copy in your stream key and then it would appear like something like this. I just typed something in here. If you click on show, it says the stream key right here. So this is where you have to copy it in and then hit apply. And that's your connect. That's a connection between OBS and your Twitch account. We can go to output. We have simple and advanced here. I'm going to show you the advanced settings because those advanced settings cover the simple ones anyway. So audio track for the beginning, I would leave on one. So because you only need one audio track here. And then we have the encoder. And if you have the X264 one enabled, it's going to take a lot from your CPU. So that's basically what we call streaming via your CPU here. We can have these options as well. But let's talk about this one at first. You want to have enforced streaming service encoder settings on on because then it like forces it to use the settings Twitch requires. You can rescale your output, but we're going to leave this on off because we're going to talk about it at the video part as well. The rate control you can leave on CBR as well, but this is where it gets interesting here. So the bit rate is basically the quality you have your stream on. So the higher your bit rate, the more upload you need and the better your stream quality gets. I'm going to show you a table in a second on the, the relations between all these settings. Then we have the keyframe interval. We can have the CPU usage. This is like people discuss. I usually have it on very fast. I think Twitch recommends having it on very fast. If you have really having trouble with your with your stream and it, it's stuttering or you're losing connection and stuff like that, you might want to play around with these as well. But I would recommend having it on very fast as well as the profile on none and the tune on none. Like don't play around with these if unless you have like trouble with your stream, then you can start playing around with those and see what's working better. Usually you don't have to. So let's have a look at the table I was talking about earlier. Let me just find my tab real quick. There we go. So you see what this looks like for 1080p and 60 FPS. You would have a vertical resolution of 1080, of course, and a bitrate of 4.5K to 6K. If you go on 6K, it's better 1080p than it is with 4500. The frame rate should be to 60 or 50 FPS. We're gonna show the frame rate settings later on at the video part. And then a keyframe interval of two. And you can have the H264 settings to main or high and the level on four to six. So make sure you have a look at this table. Here is the link and adjust your settings according to this table because it's really hard to give you like a go-to solution here because your computer might be different than mine is and your internet connection might be different than mine is. So this is a bit of a playing around thing and find the settings that work for you. You have to know what your computer is capable of doing. You have to know what your internet connection is capable of doing and then find the settings that work for you. Unfortunately, I can't really give a go-to solution here. If you can't really stream via your CPU because your CPU is not that strong, you can also, for the, the GeForce graphic cards, you can stream over that one here. Then you can also have the Enforce Encoder settings, Enforce Streaming Service Encoder settings and so on. And you have the bitrate here as well, the keyframe interval here as well. Then you have the preset profile name and level. I would leave them on default unless it's definitely not working out. Same goes for those here. It's important to know that this actually takes power from your CPU, while this setting takes power from your graphics card, your GPU, and then you have to adjust the bitrate again. So play around, see what works for you, know what what's your stronger what's a stronger component in your computer. It also depends on which game you are playing. I usually stream over my graphic card here. I stream with 4500 bitrate and adjusted the keyframe interval. I think it's two there. And 
then I'm doing really good with these settings because with my CPU I was not able to stream Fortnite, that's why I switched to my GPU there. Then we go to recordings, like if you want to record your streams or I'm recording this tutorial right now this way, we can have a custom output but I have it on standard, then we have the path here, we have the format it's recording in, I usually would recommend mp4 but it's on you, whatever you want, you can have more audio tracks but the first one is totally fine, then you can have the encoder settings here again but if your encoder settings work on streaming, they also work on encoding. So use stream encoder usually is fine. You can rescale the output. Like if you want to uh, record on lower quality or higher quality than you are streaming, you can have a different output here as well. We can have the different audios adjusted. So maybe track one, like you see here are the tracks. Track 1 should be higher quality, then you can up the quality here. I actually have never played around with these. I always left them on what they are and it worked out for me. But if you really want to make adjustments for your audio settings, feel free to lower or uh, increase the bitrate here. Then we have the replay buffer. We can enable it so we can have replays, but we, can, we have to make sure to set a hotkey for the replays. If you want them, you can have them here. You can have the maximum replay time, so you can make replays from your stream. I never use them. I actually have them, like there are other tools, like there's boom replays or something out there that probably work better because then your community can decide what your replay is. But if you wanna have replays for a stream, you can enable them here. You have to set the hotkey in the hotkey sections right there, and then you can have your own replays. At the audio, we can have the sample rate. We can have our channels on mono, stereo, and 7.1, 5.1, 4.1, .1, whatever you need for your, uh, for your audio channels there. Then we can have our desktop audio device. So this is the stuff that gets captured right here. Those are my speakers. So everything that would go out of my speakers, it gets captured in OBS. Then we can have a second audio device if you have set one or if you want one. I could also capture the, the sound of my uh, monitor right here. I have my primary capture device or my primary microphone, which is my Honor Mic CM900. If I want another one, I could also take my headset microphone. Some people use two microphones to increase the quality of their voice. Like if you want to get that advanced, why not? But for the beginning, it works. For me, it works perfectly with my single microphone. Then the audio meter decay rate is basically how quick the bar goes down here again. I have it on fast. You can have different settings here. Usually you don't have to change anything here. You can have push to mute activated or push to talk for some for some sources here, for example, if I have a push to mute on my microphone because I want to I want to have a button which I press and then nothing gets captured anymore on a microphone, I can activate it right here. Also push to talk, so I would have to press the button and I have to keep it pressed in order to be able to talk into my microphone or my microphone won't capture anything if I don't press the button. This could work, for example, if you have Discord and you're playing with different people, you have Discord right here and then you can have a push to mute button. Maybe you died in your game, but the others are still playing and they are talking and, and talking strategies and stuff. You can push to mute them so you can talk to your chat and the chat doesn't hear the audio that comes from Discord. So very specific uses here. Usually you don't need them as well, but this is a use I would I was thinking of that would be would work for me, the Discord one that is. Then we have our video settings. So this is our base canvas. If we want to stream on full HD, we want to have this to 920 to 1080. But we can scale down our output. Oopsie, that was wrong. There we go. We can downscale our output. So if we want to 
downscale it to Twitch to let's say to uh, 1280 times 720 then we can downscale it and Twitch will get it in this resolution. Then we have the downscaling filter. So you usually want to have this on 32 samples because that's the higher quality downscaling. If you run out of resources, of your, or if your computer runs out of resources or can't handle it anymore, you can have sharpened scaling 16 samples as well. And here you can set the FPS you are streaming on. You're streaming on. I usually have this on 60, but it also depends on what your computer is capable to do. So as I said before, those are very individual settings. Try and play around what works for you. How much can your computer handle? If your computer, if you get a really strong computer or you have a double computer or a streaming computer and gaming computer setup, you might have this higher. If your computer is not that good or not that strong, you might have this lower. So pretty individual settings here. We can set hotkeys for different things. We can set a hotkey for start streaming and stop streaming, for example. We can have start replay buffer and stop replay buffer. So if we start it, then we have to hit the button. And if we want to stop the replay, we have to release the button and then it will show the replay. We can have transitions here as well. So if you we want to transition to another scene, or actually we have switched to scene here. If we want to switch to different scenes, we can have this as a shortcut as well. So go through all of these and find out which ones you need. I usually don't stream with shortcuts. Maybe if you are running a single monitor setup, you might need more of them. Since I usually have my OBS on my second monitor, I don't really need any of those. And then we can have more advanced settings. In the beginning, those aren't really necessary at all. But you can have process priority here. So this is basically how important OBS is to your computer or the OBS process you got running. If you have this above normal, OBS gets more resources, but this might also mean that the game that you're streaming gets, gets less resources. So you might get lag in the game, but OBS is running clearly. So I would recommend for the beginning, leave it on normal. If you're struggling with OBS, like play around with those as well. Then we have the video renderer. Usually nothing you would change right here. You can have audio monitoring. So if you want to hear yourself, you can have a monitor set up and you would have the device you want to have your monitoring at. I usually have this on default. You can have recording, file name format, the way your files or recorded files are named. Then we have override files if exists. We can have the replay buffer file name and the suffix, like all those settings. As I said, not very important at the beginning, though this is fine tuning. So don't worry too much about those in the beginning. You can have a stream delay. This is usually used for tournaments because nobody can stream snipe you. I would not recommend having this on on if you are just normally streaming because with the stream delay also comes the delay that goes to your chat and your chat will have, if I enable it now, 20 seconds delay until they get your response, the response you said to their question. And this is very long. So I would not have this on on unless it's like for tournament purpose or if you get stream snapped really hard. But there's usually no reason to have this on on right now. Auto reconnect. If we lose connection to Twitch or to our streaming provider, it automatically retries after 10 seconds and it maximum retries of 20. So if we lose connection, it will have the countdown and then reconnects if possible. I would have the network settings on default as well. Don't do anything right there. As I said, this is fine tuning. You probably won't need them in the beginning. Don't forget to hit apply here and OK. And then you are set up for your stream. Hit the start streaming button and give it a go. So when you start OBS, this is the screen you're going to see. And you see our preview is black. And we want to change that as soon as possible. So what are we going to do here? First of all, I'm going to explain the interface. So up here you have the options for show recordings and so on. You have to go through them on your own. You can 
edit here. For example, you can rotate your, your picture and stuff like that. You can change the order of your sources, but we are having in, we are looking at that in a second. Preview scaling and so on. You also can have advanced audio properties, but we're going through those later on as well. Then we can have your view, like we can have different locks here, like we can put away our mixer, but that's actually what we want to have. So we want to have those activated, I think. Maybe you can get rid of the transitions if you don't have transitions, but I just usually leave all of them on because they are not really annoying or something. Then we can have scene collections. So scenes are down here. I'm going into detail in a second, but you can have different ones. And you see, I have on learning, recording, streaming, and so on. So different scenes for different occasions. Same goes for the profile here. Oh, I forgot that. You can have different profile settings. So you see I'm at recording right now, but I also have owned learning, streaming, and unknown. Then we have different tools like the advanced scene switcher, captions. They don't really work that good, but feel free to play around with them and so on if you need some extras and you have the help at the end. So what do we see down here? We see scenes and we had the word above already, but this is basically a collection of sources and you can add as many sources as you want. I'm going to explain all of them later on, but just so you understand the order, a scene is basically a collection of sources and sources are the things you see in your stream or in your preview. You have your mixer here, so what if I unmute my microphone here, you see it's recording my voice and I see something is going on. Then I also have the desktop audio here, so if there would be music playing or later on I'm going to show a game, you will see that this starts uh, working as well. Right now there is no desktop audio going on because it's only me speaking into my microphone, so nothing is happening here. But this is really neat to see if your stream is working, like people say, oh, your mic is muted and something and they want to troll you. You can check it right here by simply looking if, if there's happening something here. Then we have the scene transitions. So if you have transitions between scenes, you can check them out here or you can set them here. You can also have the duration set. And then you have the controls. This is where you start streaming. So this is the button you hit when you go live. This is the button you hit when you want to record something. This is when you want to switch between studio mode, which is basically looks like this. So you have one scene here and one scene there. You have the transition and you can change the transition and so on. I don't usually have studio mode on though. We have the settings here, but I'm going to talk about those in the next chapter or in one of the next chapters and we can exit. Okay, so now here comes the interesting part. We have already set up a scene called owned. We can have more of them. We can have it owned learning as well. It doesn't really matter. It's just how you want to order your sources. So we're going to have owned. And the first thing we want to add to a stream is an overlay. So where do we? F how can we add an overlay? There are two ways to do that. Later on, I'm going to show you how to use stream elements and stream labs and you can put your overlay in there and actually have a browser source where you put the link. Let's have this overlay test and you would put the link you get from stream elements or stream labs right in there and adjust the resolution here. This is not what we're going to do here. We're going to add a basic overlay as a picture, as a PNG basically. So we add an image, calling it overlay, hit OK, and then we have to browse for our image file. And let me look for this real quick. There is our standard own stream overlay, nothing very special, but we can hit OK and it's there. So now that we have our overlay set up, I guess it's time to add our face cam and that's when you are going to see my face in a second. So what are we doing here? We go on add, we add a video capture device, we call in it face cam. 
Some people like to call it webcam and so on, whatever you want actually. And here I am. Oh, I actually have to move a bit over here. There we go. As you see, I'm having my Logitech HD Pro webcam C920. Then I could deactivate it. I could configure it so it goes into the Logitech settings here. We could configure the crossbar. We can deactivate it when not showing to actually save some resources. And then here comes the important part. We have resolution FPS device default. If we want to have our resolution set on our own, like we want to configure it ourselves, we go to custom. Then we can set the resolution. Just make sure you choose a resolution your camera actually can handle. So this camera can go to 1920 times 1080. We can have the highest FPS if we want to. Then we can play around with the video format. It just changes a little, like it usually doesn't do that much. So I keep them on any. We can play around with the colors as well if we want to, if it works better for us, just for the fine settings here. We can have a different color range. We have this on full if we want to. You see, it kind of gets a bit weird here because it doesn't really use my settings. They're the ones I usually have since I added it new. Buffering, we can flip it vertically. Doesn't really make sense though. And if your webcam is also capable of capturing audio, we can capture audio only, output desktop audio, output desktop audio wave only. You usually don't want to capture your audio with your webcam, so we're going to deactivate it in a second anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then we hit OK, and here I am, and I said we're going to deactivate our face cam audio and this is what we do right here we mute it and we can even hide it so it's, we can't click it by accident because sometimes it happens that people have their webcam microphone activated instead of their usual microphone and then the sound gets really crappy so i would recommend deactivating and hiding it so nothing can happen here if somebody tells you your audio quality is crap today just make sure that you have you don't have your webcam audio activated. Then we can make it smaller and bigger right here. You can do this with all of your scenes and we can fit it in there. And you see the problem we are facing here right now is that it's actually above my overlay and I want to have it behind my overlay. So that's when we um, have to readjust the order down here. Just move it below, there we go, move it below the face cam and you're fine. A second really neat trick and you see the screen behind me is green. I'm going to show you how to set up a green screen. And this does not work with the frame we got here but I'm going to show it anyways. So we have to right click on our face cam, we hit filters and then we have the effect filters right here. And we want to add a new effect filter and something called chroma key. Then we can rename it, let's call it green screen. We hit OK. And then we get into this and we can have different color settings here, but you saw my screen is green, so I have to keep it for green now. You see that it's already working because my, oops, it's, there we go, my pillow here already gets deleted a little bit and the screen behind is already getting deleted here. So what you want to do is, in the beginning, you want to play around with similarity and you want to play around with smoothness. Those are the more important ones. And you see, the higher my similarity gets, the smoother my picture should get. There you go. Just those are individual settings. It's pretty much depending on your lighting and on your green screen color. So it's this is nothing you can go with just play around with those two settings and until you find settings that are fine for you that doesn't look too bad actually i think i'm gonna lower my similarity and i'm actually a really good example for the difficulties you can have with a green screen because you see beard is always a bit of hard to capture for it and you have to really find the right settings there it's possible i've as you see it's it's working properly actually so if I would do some more fine adjustment, it would work perfectly. But if you have a big beard like me or like longer hairs, it kind of gets a bit more difficult. But I'm fine with that for now. So I can close it and we have our green screen set up.
there we go. Uh, the white thing here is actually because mm, this is the end of my, like this is my wall you see here. Let's have it like this. You see my wall there. There we go. I'm going to frame myself in there and we are fine. What else could we do here? We could actually add more scenes. So we can add an audio input capture. Maybe you have somebody else casting with you. You have a friend over and here's a separate mic. That's when you add another audio input capture. We put it in here and then I could add my headset microphone, for example, which is here. Right now I'm using this one, but my friend gets my headset and he can use this one as well. Uh, I'm going to use the default and I'm going to mute it right afterwards because it might sound weird. There we go. We had to mute it here, but you see it's there now and we can activate and deactivate it. We can also like lower the sound of it. If it captures too loud, then you have to lower it right here. Uh, we can also add audio output capture. Like we have our desktop audio that's captured. Usually that's enough. You can add more things here. Uh, you see, this is. I could also capture the audio that comes out of my monitor. Don't know if you want to do that. Maybe you have a reason to do so. Then feel free to add them. Just make sure that you don't capture all the audio and it gets like super weird and super mixed up. All right, let me delete those real quick because otherwise it gets too much here. Then I talked about the browser source. So this is important for Streamlabs and Stream Elements. We're talking about those in later chap chapters and now you will see the links you would have to put in here. But this is how you capture those. And this is how you add the donation all time, for example, the donation today, the latest follower, the today's follower, you capture the alerts and stuff like that. You all, all of it, you would have to fill in or add with the browser source. So just make sure you watch the later chapters about stream elements and stream labs. We can have a color source here as well. So this is just like if you want a colored field in your stream, like maybe you find a reason to add one. I never had to add this. Like there's, there was no reason for me to add it. I mean, you see, I can do this and I have this blue square here for whatever reason you want to do that but it's good to know maybe you find a reason then we could add a display capture so this is when we would capture our own screen um let me show you this this might look weird now because we will capture ourselves over and over and over and over again so let's hope this doesn't look yeah you see we are capturing the screen here. Oh God, this looks weird. And we can switch between my two screens, but I'm gonna keep it for that one. I'm gonna make it smaller so it doesn't look that weird anymore. But this is what it looks like. We're capturing the screen I'm on right now. Sometimes it's useful uh, because some games aren't really are really hard to capture with the game capture and they're like, you have to play around a lot with it. Also for those tutorial type videos, it's it's good to have a screen capture. So what you do here, you capture everything that's on your screen. So make sure you hide personal things. Don't show your email address or your telephone number here. Good, let's put this away as well. Then we can add, and this is the one of the more important ones, a game capture. So I've already prepared a game here, Isaac. And then you want to go, you either want to capture any full screen application, but if you want to capture a game, you want to go capture a specific window. And it should be that one. I'm a huge fan of Binding of Isaac. Then we have match the title, otherwise find window of the same executable. It's not that important. Those are actually, I usually have those on, on normal settings. Like if there's something not really working for you, you might want to play around with those settings, but leave them on standard for now and go on OK. And it does not capture Isaac. There it is. See? All right, I have Isaac in windowed mode. I can go to full screen now. And then I had to readjust it. And it, like my, 
There we go. It, it doesn't cover it because my, my resolution for Isaac is a bit different. I think it should work if I go to windowed now. I can put it up to... There we go. I can scale it to full screen. And you saw, like, I have moved Isaac down here because if I have it up, I'm covering everything. Right now, I'm covering everything except for my overlay. And if I move it to the very bottom, I cover everything. So that's what you want to have. You usually want to have your game at the very bottom here. And then I can also show you... Give me a second. This is actually a speedrun mod for Isaac. That's what I do in my free time. There we go. And now you see my audio starts working. So this is the Isaac music you hear here. And it starts working here. If people say, wow, your audio is too loud. And you're actually already on music on the last settings you have here you can also lower it right here and it gets more quiet all the time the lower you get here all right let's turn off isaac again <laughs> and actually you can capture most of the games you can capture with the game capture sometimes you need the display or window capture here so we're going to delete isaac again i would love to show you a speed run at some point but this is not happening right now and we already have added images with our overlay, but you can add it at any image you want to. You can also have an image slideshow. If you have more images, maybe you want to have your um, social media buttons like switch over time all the time. You can add them here and oops, this is not what I wanted. Automatic. Then you can add more images here and they will switch over time or they will fade over time and it's next image and next image, next image. I, I could think of it like using it for your social media information. Like first it's Twitter and after 8,000 milliseconds it's Facebook and after 8,000 milliseconds it's your Instagram. Then comes your Reddit and whatever you want. You can select the transition speed here, the time in between the slides so when they are when they are changing you can have them on a loop hide when slideshow is done and you have to can randomize them so it picks them randomly over and over again and you can have the aspect ratio it's on automatic here but you can have them set anyways however you want and here's the list of files you would add here that goes into the slideshow okay let's put that away again we could also add a media source. So this is when you want to add a video. I don't have a video right now, but if you have some animation, for example, we have our chicken dinner is animation where there is this big chicken and it starts wobbling around. Then you want to add like a media source basically for videos. You can also have this like on loop again or restart playback when source becomes active again. So if you switch source, it or if you... If the source gets active again, it plays again. Then use hardware decoding when, when available, hide source when playback ends. So if it's done, it's get hidden and close file when inactive, it just closes the file again. There we go. Then we can add a scene, but we already have a scene added so we can add Edit them here as, uh, add them here as well. We are not going to add another scene. We can add text, GDI plus. This is, I mean, we can add some text. This is Bob. There we go. So if you just want to have text on your screen, oops, no, move it. There we go. There we go. We have this over our head. You can have something like that later on when it comes to our Streamlabs tutorial you will have to add text that gets read from a file because that's how you add the donation today stuff with Streamlabs but I'm not going into that right now. You will see that in the Streamlabs tutorial I'm going to show you OBS again and show you how it's done again. Then we have a video source again so we can have a video edit here again. You can have a whole, for the VLC player, you can have your whole playlist. You can shuffle the playlist and so on. Might be interesting if you want to play a bunch of clips you have. And when you're AFK, you're going to the scene and it just randomly shuffles through all these clips if you want to. We have the video capture device, which is our face cam. We've been through that. 
we can capture a window. So maybe you want to capture, uh, you're playing a game in window mode or something like that and it doesn't work in game mode, then you can capture a specific window here. And you see right now it captures my OBS window again. So basically similar to the, to the screen capture we had or monitor capture and we can go on OK and we have like this, the window we're looking at, ra at, at now. We're looking at right now words. How do they even work? It gets captured. It just leaves out the bar at the very top. So it's just inside the window. Good. Sometimes it's useful if you can't game capture something, you use your window capture. We're deleting it because it starts getting annoying. And we can also add a text free type 2. Basically, same thing again. We can add text. I never used this before, so you probably won't need it right away. It's another way how to add some text to your screen. Just a neat, whoops, no, we don't want to move, remove our overlay. A neat trick for text if we go to properties again. If you want to have it bigger, make sure you make the size of it bigger right here. Because, and I'm going to show you this. There we go. It scales really bad. So if we make it bigger here, you see it scale, those scale really bad. So OBS is really bad with making it bigger this way. Just make sure you select a bigger font if you want to have it bigger. All right, that's where the basic settings or the basic instructions for OBS.